Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we are here to discuss Pakistan's newly launched uh, military campaign, uh, Operation Azme Istikham, on June 22nd. The campaign reportedly employs a multi-pronged multi approach, which undertakes both kinetic operations against groups in the country, as well as uh, opens up talks with neighboring Afghanistan to discuss issues regarding uh, cross-border terrorism. So just to understand what drives it, uh, what are the implications, uh, I want to bring in my colleagues, uh, Bhargav and Uday, and I'm Pratik, and we'll be discussing uh, different facets of this. So just to quickly get us started, uh, you know, Pakistan and terrorism have had a you know long relationship. We've seen the country suffer from it, uh, suffer from attacks by different groups, both domestic and across the borders. It's I just wanted to understand Uday, this is um, a constant issue in Pakistan, yeah. but we are seeing a fresh announcement for a specific campaign right now. So I just wanted to understand from you what drives it, uh, what drives the announcement, why is it happening now? And uh, you know, if you can give us a little bit of context on the announcement. Thanks a lot, Pratik. Yeah, that's a very interesting question. Uh, what drives it and why now uh, Pakistan has seen a large surge in terrorism since the Taliban, Afghan Taliban took over in August 2021. Uh, so the timing is interesting. It comes as, you know, in Pakistan has seen an 83% increase in terror attacks and over 300 terrorism related deaths so far just this year. Um, it also comes at a time when uh, there has been a lot of national controversy over uh, some recent mob lynchings against minorities in um, different parts of Pakistan, including Khyber Pakhtunkhwa and uh, Punjab. And um, it's, it's an interesting operation. Uh, the details of it are not clear yet. Uh, we're not sure whether this means that the army will be conducting intelligence-based operations or widespread military operations like it did in the 2010s, for example, in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa. Um, so there's a lot of international uh, domestic pressure that's uh, driving this um, announcement. What's also driving it is uh, Pakistan's main supporter of economically, which is China, has also been increasing pressure on Pakistan to combat terrorism. A lot of uh, Chinese interests and China's Belt and Road Initiative has been targeted repeatedly in Balochistan and even in Karachi. Uh, China has previously re requested for the deployment of Chinese uh, military forces or auxiliary security forces in Pakistan, but Pakistan has denied that, uh, saying that they will handle everything internally and, uh, you know, uh, they'll curb terrorism. But now we're at a point where the Pakistan government is finally seeing that, or finally saying or acknowledging the fact that they do not have terrorism under control. Um, and uh, Bhargav, if uh, you can just expand a bit on the push from China for security, What's the background to this? Certainly. So calling China a major stakeholder in Pakistan is an understatement. Chinese interests are quite ubiquitous across the board, uh, whether it is security, political, or even economic for that matter. Now, China's Belt and Road, Belt and Road Initiative has been under the scanner for some time now. And the progress or lack thereof in this project or in the entire complex from uh, from Azad, so-called Azad Jammu and Kashmir to Gwadar port has been a major controversy. Uh, different prime ministers have taken different uh, different approach to this. Some of them have been quite vocal, like Nawaz Sharif and Imran Khan has been quite muted. But uh, it doesn't really take away from the large investments what Chinese have made, and they're putting pressure to ensure that the investments are secured. And obviously, the Pakistani military, which has... Uh, its hands in practically everything, starting from economy to politics, uh, will definitely will not allow foreign military presence in uh, in in the country. That that's basically admitting defeat to 
uh, you know, defeat or failure to control internal security. Now, what basically uh, can be considered a trigger for such an announcement, a, a massive operation uh, in the country would be the recent attack on uh, on a on a vehicle which was carrying Chinese uh, employees uh, who are working on Dasu Hydro uh, power project in KP, and this resulted in five uh, de deaths of five Chinese uh, nationals and one Pakistani. Now, as Uday mentioned, that there has been a massive increase this year in in terms of the actual attacks in the region, especially KP and Baluchistan. Uh, we need to also note that uh, Chinese. Uh, uh, Chinese concerns are not unfounded because the Pakistan economy is in doldrums. They have not recovered uh, since the COVID. And they, like we say, living paycheck to paycheck, Pakistan lives from eight to eight. And their uh, foreign exchange reserves are still around $14 billion uh, as we speak now. And their projection for this year is near 2.4% in terms of GDP growth rate. And all of this combined, the pressure on the civilian government as well as the military is quite high. And, uh, up, and such an operation serves multiple purposes. Firstly, to satisfy the Chinese stakeholders. Second, uh, to project to its own population that they're acting tough on these detractors, the infiltrators that, you know, in, in KP. And uh, but again, we can't really take away from the very nature of the province, both provinces rather, KP and Balochistan, which is quite conservative, uh, ruled by tribal laws, and so on and so forth. Thanks for those inputs, Bhargav. Uh, what I gather from uh, these points that we've gathered is there's an upsurge of terrorism, and the security situation in Pakistan is, of course, of concern, and now especially for Chinese investments. So there is a, there is a bit of pressure from China's side to stabilize and clean up uh, the country from terrorism. Now, uh, you know, just to understand this a little better, um, you know, has there been a precedent of similar campaigns in the past? Have there been anything? And if yes, what, what what's the, you know, what has the outcome been? Because this one seems to have gained a significant amount of media attention over the recent days. Uh, Uday, you want to take that? Right. Yeah, yeah, sure. I'll take that. Uh, so Pakistan has uh, launched massive military campaigns against terrorism in the past, in 2019 and uh, in 2009, sorry and then a smaller one in 2017. Uh, these have been focused in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa. Uh, the reason for this is because of the presence of the uh, Pakistani Taliban there. The border with Afghanistan is quite porous, and um, the Pakistani Taliban used to go over in Afghanistan to hide out and you know train and rearm and then conduct attacks. And uh, they actually did take whole territory in the 2000s for some time and uh that motivated uh some of these operations so you know these operations intended to flush out the militants from their spots and take away their influence and um during the operations thousands of militants were killed uh this was at a time when thousands of civilians were dying every year in terrorist attacks and that had significantly decreased as we went into the 2010s. So the military operation was uh, relatively successful in curbing the immediate threat of terrorism at that point. Um, but it also had consequences such as the mass displacement of citizens, uh, which is still an issue today. If we look at the Pakistan uh the Pashtun Tafuz movement, uh, which is a really large movement in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, they're still protesting against, you know, what the military did in operations there. And they're also uh, opposed to the current announcement of an operation. Um, so largely, the previous campaigns were successful in decreasing the threat of uh, terrorism, even though they didn't actually address some of the causes of it and the conditions geopolitically were quite different at that point so before i mean we assess 
uh, how this operation will go or what we think of how effective this campaign will be. Uh, maybe Bhargav or Prateek, could you tell us what this campaign will look like itself? Like, what can we expect in the coming months? So the immediate fallout I would expect is increase in tensions between Afghanistan and Pakistan as the border is porous, as you rightly mentioned. Uh, they basically consider each other blood brothers. They have fought the U.S. together. And I do not see a reason why Afghanistan will turn their back on their uh, so-called blood brothers in the form of TTP, Tariq Taliban, Pakistan. Uh, at the same time, we we can expect uh, a greater degree of alienation of people at the ground level. Uh, if we look at some of the documentaries made at the uh, at the very core of these operations where they are taking place or where they took place back in 2014 uh, under Operation Zerbeaz, the village headman uh, used to openly mention that who are these TTP people? They are, after all, sons and brothers coming out of the same villages. Uh, where they're trying to target these people. How are they going to differentiate between these people and the combatants? And these are not regular armed forces. These are irregular uh, ragtag uh, militant groups, which uh, which are very hard to distinguish, especially in a place like KP and, and Baluchistan, where the TTP is deeply entrenched in the tribal traditions or tribal hierarchies. So uh, that brings into question how stable the situation is going to be in the coming months and years if the operation intensifies beyond a certain point. Now, at the same time, uh, we need to also consider its impact on the projects, the infrastructure projects Chinese are working on. They may have put pressure to start a new campaign to eradicate, so-called eradicate, uh, these militant groups or their operations in these areas, but without support from the local communities, the tribal leadership, how are they going to operate? These are some of the tough questions the Pakistani military, the civilian leadership, as well as the Chinese interests need to address. The Chinese are looking at a dichotomous uh, spectrum here. At, on one side, the civilian leadership and the military need to ensure that there is economic development, at least there is a projection of economic development, and the Chinese are very much partner to that. At the same time, the political parties cannot alienate the religious right wing, uh, which are deeply entrenched, or their support base is deeply entrenched in the conservative areas of KP and Balochistan, or even parts of Sindh and, and Punjab for that matter. So how do they balance uh, these two elements? And caught in between are the, the Chinese as well as the IMF, which is providing aid every time Pakistan goes uh, into a trouble. Uh, the same applies to the Arab backers of Pakistani government. Uh, hope that makes sense. Uh, where would you like to add to this? Yeah, um, I just like to, in terms of what's going to happen now, in terms of the terrorist groups, uh, recently, just a few days ago, or actually a couple of days ago, there was a three day long clash. Uh, where terrorists tried to infiltrate the Pakistani border from Afghanistan. Uh, so what we are going to see is the continuation of attacks and infiltration of attempts. Uh, the main targets will be security forces, uh, but you know collateral damage will occur, and uh, that can mean civilian casualties also. Um, the Pakistani Taliban has in the last couple of years shown that it can uh, conduct large scale assaults on uh, police stations or military bases, for example. Uh, so it's firepower, especially since uh, the US has withdrawn from Afghanistan, has increased as has its training. Um, the TTP American walk around in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, that was unheard of a decade ago. Uh, so we're going to see a lot of terrorist activity, and um, I don't think attacks will go down at this point. Uh, I think that the terrorists will work out a strategy to counter, you know, the kind of operations that the Pakistani military will be deploying on the ground um, in the areas. One thing that uh, they will also 
terrorist groups will have to deal with, especially the Pakistan Taliban, is that uh, there is some opposition to their presence in parts of, you know, Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, like Swat and uh, other places. But uh, as Bhargav mentioned, this is still going to be hard for the military and the government to manage because they're making the same mistake of, you know, having good extremists versus bad extremists. In this case, the good extremists are the Tariqi Labaik Pakistan or the TLP, which was uh, responsible for uh, torturing and burning a man alive on an alleged blasphemy case uh, recently. But um, the Pakistan government has basically given TLP free reign. So extremism and uh, these ideologies do have an overlap. And so, yeah, it really will be a challenge to see how effective uh, this campaign is. Uh, Pratik Bhargav, any comments on that, the effectiveness of the campaign? So despite uh, the critical questions we raised, we need to also understand the level of radicalization these uh, militant groups can bring in, especially towards the major cities like Karachi, Lahore, Islamabad, more so Karachi. Uh, we got to also uh, remember towards 2009-2010, uh, uh, there were recruitment camps by TTP uh, in these areas. So we can criticize the Pakistani military as much as we want, but there are uh, critical concerns there as well. So with that, that doesn't really take away from the questions and critiques what we raised on the effectiveness of the, uh, of the operation, given the ubiquitous condition of the tribal areas. So with that, I would like to close this off. Thank you. Thank you for those insights, Bhargav. I think given the complexity of the security environment and the political factors, it is to be seen what this campaign will bring out in the next couple of months. Uh, challenges from the domestic sphere as well as pressure from China and how the Afghanistan sides, uh, side re reacts to the diplomatic uh, you know, approach will all, I think, be key factors in determining the outcomes of this campaign. Having said that, uh, thank you for your insights and thank you, for, uh, thank you to the audience for tuning in.